And we're back to the hollow street. This mysterious game we're at. And Captain Emoji. Just and trying to get lucky. Liberating an Earth-like planet, maybe? I don't actually know. It doesn't front load a lot, I'm gonna be honest with you. It, it just sort of expects you to kind of go with it. You know, you have a cool ship, they have lots and lots of less cool ships. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought that was me that got crashed. Usually I'm the one that gets headbutt by the ship. It was just embarrassing. I think I, I think it got us both with that one. Just pummeled by a mid bass. Thank goodness for our sensors telling us there's stuff behind us. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like whoever made this game was like a chameleon. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of different directions you're supposed to be looking in order to really get full effect out of this game. Yeah. Hey, poor player, get ready! Ah. Hey, warping enemies. Warping enemies with big giant, uh, like, you know, arms so that they can do, like, lariats. <laughs> yeah. Pop out and spin. That's usually what gets me. I mean, the shooting is almost inconsequent inconsequential. But those arms popping out has killed me on more occasions than I'd like to admit. Yeah. Ah! Thought I was gonna get out of the way of that, but. Just occurred to me, we're probably gonna hear a million tiny clicks throughout this entire episode. Oh, yeah. No, it's going to be <laughs> amazing to edit. I I'm sorry, I didn't even think about it. I will say, I think this is one of the few games like this I can think of where you have to just mash all the time. Yeah, they don't have a shoot fast button. Really an oversight. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, mashing is usually better than the auto-fire. But it's not usually necessary, whereas it is the only way to play. Mm. That's sort of surprising, given the uh, the fact that it's a like, Neo Geo game. Well, and they made a lot of these, so I just figured that they would be the, the ones to lead the way on that sort of thing. Plus, uh, this isn't exactly a Nintendo game or an Atari game. We've sort of figured out what the, you know, what the comfort level is for things. Yeah. No one no one wants to have to repeatedly mash all the time. It's exhausting. I will say the folks who uh, translated this to uh, the Switch did give us two different buttons that count as that button. R2 also counts for it. He smashed all his equipment. It is nice being able to, like, alternate what's doing the mashing, I guess. Is, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> Got us both. Oh, that's what continues it for. It's true. Uh, I will say that this is still cheaper than playing it in the arcade. Like, oh, yeah. buying it for the Switch. Definitely. I figure buying it for the Switch, if you play through this game one, maybe two times, you have paid for it in arcade trips. Yep. Um, assuming you can find an arcade. Assuming you can find an arcade and that it has this particular game. And of course I'm assuming you're like, standard 50 cents a pop. Because 
arcade prices haven't gone up since, like, the 80s. At least, not for this kind of game. I suppose your VR experiences and, and the like have gone up. They have to. I mean, the equipment's more expensive. Yeah. But, I mean, technically, this stuff should cost more to play, too, because you have to maintain all that vintage equipment. Theoretically. I don't remember the Neo Geo boards having a huge issue, but I know that some of them, you basically have to worry about them catching fire? Yeah. There's a Sega board, like, the Sega, like, Type 1 board or something like that. They built it to try and compete with one of the big Neo Geo boards on the market at the time. And it was a good board, and a lot of really good games use it. They forgot to add fans. Ooh. It has heat sinks and solder paste, but they definitely meant to add fans, because it, it runs a little hot. Or, it ran a little hot like 30 or 40 years ago. And solder paste and stuff like that wears out, you know, it, it goes bad. And, yeah. uh, so, I mean, those, those things could cook themselves alive now without, uh, proper ventilation. And could, you know, even burn down said arcade or garage or wherever they're living now. So, you know, sort of spooky. <laughs> yeah. Definitely one of those things that I would want to research if I ever do pull the trigger and actually buy an arcade machine, which is, you know, one of those nerd goals. It's sort of the, the nerd midlife crisis thing instead of buying the fancy cars, you know. Do I want to buy my own arcade machine? Do I want to buy my own arcade or pinball or pachinko or... I skipped ahead to the end. I have I have a, had a pachinko machine for many years. Uh, yeah. I need to figure out how to restore that. Because, I mean, the electricals work. And I bet if we bang some stuff out, we could probably get most of the mechanicals back up and running. But, uh, you just did it, not good. <laughs> but I feel like because it's still turned on, that means that, like, none of the boards are, you know, in bad shape, and that everything is still, you know, wired even. Okay, where's the lucky panel? Oh, it's in the water. Okay. Got yep. a new spot. No, we got it. Now we go to the secret behind Waterfall Cave. All waterfalls have to have in video games, and if I, you don't have them, you're cowards. I do appreciate that even the side-scrolly uh, shoot game had them. Oh, something I didn't know forever was that you could go underwater. Like, that surprised me. I did it on accident <laughs> once, and I was like, oh, oh, I'm not dead. This is novel. <laughs> Good job. Oh! <laughs> I got out of the way of its dive attack, and I didn't realize that it was going to... Leave lasers behind? Yeah. Like mines or something. Yeah, well, joke's on you. Yep. It's got laser mines. It does. Yeah. It doesn't help that its laser mines look a lot like my laser mines. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely not... Not ideal. It bapped me with its arm. I didn't even know it could do that. Oh, oh. Okay. There was a different arcade machine. Not by Sega, one of the other companies. And it had an anti-piracy measure. Because I guess they were worried about people pirating their boards? I don't know. Huh. It's very weird. There's a battery that can fry the entire board if, uh, if you mess with it. I think they were worried about the kind of situation of Miss Pac-Man. Uh, which... If you don't know, Mrs. Pac-Man was a daughter board that you could add to a Pac-Man arcade machine to make it a new game. Oh. Uh, 
It was by some, like, MIT students, and it was brilliant. Atari immediately bought them off the market and hired them to make most of their games for the 5200. I think that that spooked a couple of companies, like... One, it meant that a lot of companies started making boards that could be used for multiple games, like the aforementioned Sega and Neo Geo boards. But I think they also worried about third-party people maybe getting in on it and uh, stealing their piece of the pie. And so, yeah, there was this weird anti-piracy measure of this weird battery. There's actually a, a pretty good community that has made workaround battery replacement uh, boards. Ah. Like, basically little socketed battery adapters so that you don't have to worry about it killing your system. Which is good, because all of this stuff is like 30 years old and, you know, they're not getting any more common. <laughs> Yeah. No one makes any of it anymore. It's a lot of custom chipsets and, uh, you know, very specific types of RAM that, you know, might have proprietary pins and other very special arcade board nonsense. Let's just say I can see why a lot of people just go the, I'm just going to put MAME inside of an arcade cabinet, right? I was going to look so cool. I missed it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can see why people just put MAME or a Raspberry Pi or something inside of an arcade cabinet and call it good. Because that's all new technology that you can replace. Yeah. And a Raspberry Pi is like, you know, 35 bucks or something. So no, I, I get it. As much as I as much as I can appreciate the authenticity crowd that wants original hardware. And, you know, I'll admit that there is something about original hardware that's nice. Like playing an Atari on a CRT television, it doesn't have the same kind of lag. And yeah. Uh, I know that was a thing with the Wii U for me. There's a lot of my much beloved classic Nintendo type games just didn't feel as good, especially like platformers and stuff. I was like, you, know, you needed to have an extra tenth of a second. Basically. And that felt weird, because I mean. That's the one thing I remember about the Mario games, is they always felt really, like, responsive. And then, when you sat down and explained that to me, I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. But I never, I don't know if I ever would have quite come to the conclusion on my own. <laughs> it was definitely something I had not considered. Yeah. That made a lot of sense once, uh... The good old in input lag. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was the same problem with, like, all early wireless controllers. Mm -hmm. uh, before, basically anything before the WaveBird that I've ever used was pretty terrible. Because it was like trying to play a game with your TV remote. Or, heck, the Philips CDI, which was playing a video game with your TV remote. <laughs> I mean, it had controllers, but I guess those commercials where it always showed the guy playing it on the remote always cracked me up. I was like, man... You're lucky if you can change the channel and get the volume to go with those. I do not want to have to be timing sword swings or punches with that. Yeah. Oh, I made it worse. I was like, oh, I'll launch my bombs. They will help me. Because, you know, they'll yeah. carry everything in front of me. But Good job. They're blinding. <laughs> oh, no. Too many ship. Too many ship. I like how we're surrounded. It's, it's not, good. I it's love not it. good. It's not good. Oh no, they're gonna crush me. <laughs> oh, okay. The laser would have gotten me anyway. I don't even feel bad now. <laughs> Am I? Am I dead? Probably. <laughs> yep, you were dead. There was so much going on on that screen, I couldn't even be sure if I had a character to worry about, or... Yeah. Mmm, that lag. It's good lag. It is. It definitely helps more than it hurts in this particular instance. Because this is just a bananas amount of, like, things going on at once. Yeah. This is one of those stages where my bombs feel really useful, though. 
you know, my power up. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, try finding a part of the screen that isn't a giant ship right now. Yeah. No, it's, it's a trip. And this is definitely one of those instances where come their bullets don't hurt them. Like, the jerks. they're shooting at each other, basically, and as long as they hit us, they really don't care about the other ships. Well, there was a ship that got blown up by the big laser at the beginning. I suppose that's true. Nothing can survive the big laser. Well, like all these purple mines, which we can't stop with our weapons or anything. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh goodness. Oh lord. They're infinite troop bay. I wonder how many people we've killed so far. This is definitely one of those, like, world ending events for us or them, depending on who wins. And, well, how, based on how this is going, yeah, I, I don't even want to think about the galactic scale carnage we've gone into. I mean, think about how many people it takes to staff a ship this size. Yeah. Meanwhile, if, if the anime intro is to be believed, uh, our ships take one person per. Mm -hmm. Maybe some kind of robot AI or something to help, like, with stuff. But nothing explicitly shown in the intro, so as far as I know, just us. Oh no! I was trying to stay down there to hit that engine, and uh, I think I may have overstayed my welcome. A little bit. Of course, it's got crawling lasers now. Yep. I will say this is not a part that I'm very good at, because all my bullets go one way. <laughs> and there is a ship that's good at that. Like, there's one that has the little two side side dealies, little, like, drones that follow it around, yeah. that are directional, but... Oh. I thought we killed this one. Oh, no. Oh. I know we killed these, except a lot of those, I guess. Hit the lag button. Oh, I know what they remind me of. Uh, they remind me of the uh, the ships from uh, Space Battleship Yamato. Oh, yeah. The ones that don't have the armor, though. Like, the ones that aren't the Yamato. The ones that wouldn't be able to take this level of firepower for very long. Right. The ones that are usually exploding in all of the scenes before the Yamato shows up. But they even have that, like, third bridge design on top. The main ship from Gundam had one of those. Like, that just seems yeah. to be an aesthetic for uh, these, like, anime space cruisers. Uh, those are all bombs, I think. They drop down on us now. Because they weren't there to stop them coming out. Oh, this is fine. <laughs> this is fine. Uh. Aha! <laughs> we did beat it. Our skill is great. Yep. Button mashing's a skill. I feel like it could be some kind of trainer, though. <laughs> like, we're only seven dollars a quarter's into this. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, we are. Huh. Yeah. I wasn't keeping track, but it makes me a little bit sad. It is an entire allowance worth of quarters. Am I gonna want to grab this power up? I'm trying to get better about it. <laughs> <laughs> My first thought was like, oh, power ups, and I was just gonna charge up there, but. No, we have to fight the embryo now. Oh, right. Like, 
space baby or whatever. Yeah. I didn't realize it until we were setting it up, but uh, the cutscene even like shows a space baby to let you know that there is such a thing. But Lord only knows why. <laughs> Part of me wonders if like if the manual would be helpful in explaining, or if it's just not worth asking. Everything's slashing. Epilepsy warning. Yeah, maybe we... I don't know if we should tag it with that. Like, I would hope that part of the approval process for the Switch is, hey, it's not going to cause seizures, mostly. <laughs> now we fight a literal space baby. Yep. Because it's not a shooter from... It's not a shooter from the 80s, 90s, ago, yeah, if it doesn't have some weird... Cause look, pseudo it's a allegory for something. It does have a technology aspect to it, like, it's got a, a shell there. And now it has got arms. Of course it does, why wouldn't it? This isn't even my final form! Wait until you hit puberty. I was gonna make a terrible twos joke, but I think puberty's good. A bigger final form. Oh goodness! Form. But it still has the baby head. Yeah. Just, just for continuity's sake, in case we forgot, <laughs> we can we can always look at that and go, oh yeah, that was a baby a minute ago. And the lag machine is in full force right now, which yeah. is good because those giant orbs would be impossible to dodge at any other speed. There we go. I was like, hey, I'm doing pretty good. I didn't say it out loud, but I thought it really hard, but the game knew. Ugh. I often get caught under the bulk of this thing. <laughs> and I mean, you know, back in the day it would have been eight dollars in in like, you know, nineteen nineties money. Hey. Like that would have just been an allowance. Yeah. Also, I love how it always respawns you in the same spot, no matter how bad that might be, and then you just have the invincibility frames to try and make it okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, oh. You need the leg machine to thread that needle. Yeah. Ah, uh, double kill. This thing is just making us look like... Making us look like babies. You can't make us look like babies. Actual baby. Yeah, well, we'll see. So, I don't know if you do this, but even when I have the iframes, I still try to dodge stuff. Yeah. I don't know if well, it's what because if your iframes I'm... run out. I was going to say, I don't know if it's because I'm worried about iframes dying out. Or if I worry that if I don't get, keep in the mindset that I will just fly into a mole. Yep. Some column A, some column B, maybe? Rank B for baby. It was destroyed. Brawl Shella, the evil weapon as ringleader. Now it is brought the end of the interplanetary war between the Murmuria and the Mutras. 
by soldiers who wake up to the human heart. Also, people have been captured by Brashala is liberated. Peace must come back soon. The soldiers go away to seek a place where they can live in peace with a strong wish that such a war never break out again. There you go, that's the story. I feel like this is something that would get front-loaded in a modern game. Probably. It was your reward for beating the game was you got to know what the heck was going on. Kinda. Kinda. I mean, in, in so much as you get to know anything. Well, thanks for watching Endless Mode. This has been Blazing Star. Yeah. Anime shooters from the 90s. I think it's kind of our brand more than anything else. Like, if I had to pick something, it's just quirky, weird games like this. I love them. Alright, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll catch you later.